The idea that Soviet bias exists in enlisted has been going on for a while now, as long as I can remember, in fact. But this belief did not start from enlisted. It initially came from World of Tanks, and then Gaijin Entertainment's other popular vehicle-based game, War Thunder. Back in 2015, the idea that Gaijin had some kind of nationalistic attitude, since it is headquartered in Russia, that specifically affected how they model and balance vehicles from their nation, so it was deliberate, was very, very common. Spookston has a great video addressing War Thunder's possible Russian bias, which I will link in the description should you be interested. The point is, though, the whole Soviet bias idea became a massive meme that not only the player base, but Gaijin themselves were making fun of it when they gave out the title of Master of Russia bias. The idea of Soviet bias is actually very popular, as evidenced from the views on other videos, from the forums, the Reddit, and even my own Discord server, where we are now doing polls to help understand the opinions of the player base. A link is in the description though if you want to join in future debates. A common conspiracy theory on War Thunder is that Gaijin models Soviet equipment to appeal to the Russian market, which is very ironic, because apparently the Russian forums say the exact same thing, just reversed, calling Gaijin NATO shills. But is there anything to suggest that Soviet bias might actually be a thing for enlisted. Attempting to address this issue, the masses over on the Reddit and the forums will still shout bias this and bias that. Therefore, this video will be completely statistics and facts based, not opinion based. Let's cut to the chase. The answer is straightforward in my mind. No, there is not Soviet bias in Enlisted. And before all the basement dwellers hit the dislike button, let me at least explain why. The reason for my answer is twofold. One, because in the true definition of bias, it just simply is false. And two, even if you make up this definition of Soviet bias to suit your narrative, 99% of the players in this game will never, ever feel what Soviet bias actually is in your definition. To explain the first part, we need to define what we mean by bias. And for this video, I'll take the meme Wikipedia's definition. Not because it's an authoritative source, but because most places seem to agree on different websites that that's basically the definition. And also it's the meme Wikipedia, so considering this is a meme, it makes sense, right? Russian, or Soviet bias in our case, relates to unfair Soviet favored balancing. Unfair is the key word here. Now, I I could spend my time delving into history and discussing how historically accurate enlisted's weapons are compared to how powerful they actually were, but honestly, in terms of modelling especially, Darkflow have hit the nail on the head in many more times than not. There is no real evidence that they've artificially increased the power of Soviet stuff relative to other factions' stuff. Therefore, by literal definition, Soviet bias cannot exist in enlisted. I grinded up the Berlin Axis campaign before I grinded up the Berlin Allies campaign, and the Moscow Allies campaign before the Moscow Axis campaign. And no matter what order I did them in, at whatever time of the year, I noticed no bias whatsoever. But as I said, if you don't trust my opinion on it, just think about this. Even if Darkflow were bad at modelling weapons, or actually did model them in such a way to make all the Soviet stuff overpowered, it quite simply doesn't matter. What does matter is that the developers try and give somewhat balanced weaponry for both sides in all campaigns. And they do this, on the whole, well, as well as they can do for the most part. There are a few exceptions though, and I concede this. The only campaign though, which is actually unbalanced, is the Moscow campaign. Solely because the Soviets get the fully automatic AVS rifle, whereas the Axis get the ZH-29, a purely semi-automatic rifle, as their best rifle class weapon. And I mentioned this in my review on which enlisted campaign is better for you, which you can find in the top right corner of the video. This specifically is a clear and big discrepancy in terms of weapon power in the game. There are simply no other examples in the entire game that actually matter to help you win games. And for the second part of my answer as to why there's no Soviet bias in the game is something that I've already spoken about in a number of my past videos. When new players join the game, 75% of them are going to get destroyed by higher level players with cooler gear and countless days sunk into the game. That's just how it is, in literally any game. I will concede to you though, if Enlisted had some kind of matchmaking system, this effect would be drastically reduced. But as it does still happen a lot, 
players do look for excuses as to why they're getting dunked on so hard. So how does Soviet bias link with all of this? When playing Berlin or Moscow in particular, one of the things that stands out most is going to be the prevalence of quick firing SMGs that the Soviets have access to. The PPSH box magazine, for example, the PPD, even the PPS is very good. I do concede they will outperform most of the Axis SMGs in both the early and sometimes the mid game. If you knew next to nothing about the game, began as an Axis main and you had an MP28 or even an MP40 against every single enemy having the PPD 73 round magazine rapid firing menace, what would you think? My money is on Soviet bias. But in reality, in the words of Spookston, I quote, The more I played the game, the more I realised it was my lack of skill, not the developers' national origin, which was having an impact. This is exactly why I said earlier in this video that 99% of players will simply never encounter Soviet bias, or as we have debunked this term in part 1, level power differences. Simply put, what you deem as an equipment difference is actually a player difference. People for some reason don't consider this when they make outlandish claims that Soviet bias exists. You can say no all you want, argue in the comments, dislike the video, whatever. But it doesn't change the fact that someone is a better player than you. And myself, I'm including myself in this. If you lose a game of Enlisted, the enemy's team was simply better. That is how the game works, or at least that's what the devs are trying to achieve, in 99% of cases. I get angry when losing games sometimes on stream, because I feel like I shouldn't, but after a few seconds I realise I'm wrong, and that the enemy's team was just of higher quality than ours. You will realise just now I said 99% and not 100%. Does that mean there is 1% Soviet bias in the game? In Napoleon Total's video, on Soviet bias and enlisted, he claims that Soviet bias clearly exists in certain individual levels. And I quote, The PPD-3438, the second SMG unlock in Moscow, as well as the T-50 and the T-3476 all in Moscow. Now I am not taking away from the fact that some specific levels are statistically better for some sides than others. He's 100% right. But this happens all across the board, not just in a way that supports the Soviets. I could give many examples, as on screen right now. I would almost even go as far to admit that one side is simply better than the other in most campaigns. For example, as many say the Soviets are better in Moscow and in Berlin, which could actually quickly change upon the release of new campaign levels, but the Axis are better in Stalingrad. Therefore, if the PPD 3438 versus the MP40 at level 11 in Moscow is an example of Soviet bias, then by the exact same logic, you must also agree that the Toz B versus the MP38 is Axis bias, as let's face it, shotguns in this game are literal trash. This is why looking at individual levels is absolutely pointless. The only thing you should care about is what both factions end up with after completion of the entire level tree. Once you realise this, the PPD 3438 is simply not biased, using the actual definition of the word we defined earlier, but also once you realise that you won't use either of these levels once you've finished a campaign. And it's the same thing for all the tanks he mentions. Now, to his credit though, he does mention that his bias decreases as you level up in the campaign trees. But early levels don't matter for another reason as well, because there is almost never an instance where two players with the exact same campaign level, playing opposite sides with the exact same skill level, who are both utilising everything they've unlocked until that level to the maximum, i.e. spamming that item in every single squad they can get, which most can't even afford yet due to lack of silver weapon orders, who will aim at each other at the exact tenths of a second with the exact same internet speed and fire. This is the only possible way for people to experience this so-called unbalanced levelling. It's a one in a million chance for all of these things to align in a random public game, where the higher DPM weapon, whether it's a Soviet or Axis weapon or vehicle, will win. This is exactly why you will never notice it, and is why I say 99%, not 100%. But the thing is, this phenomenon is not just contained to the new player base of Enlisted. A number of experienced players also seem to believe that there is Soviet bias in Enlisted. So why is that? Perhaps they're just joining in on this meme, or maybe saying it's a funny coping mechanism for sore losers. Or they're looking at Soviet equipment from a macro point of view, and not on an individual level basis. If 
If you don't know by now, the best weapon in the game that you can get for free is the Feder of Automat, a Soviet weapon. Statistically, it just is. There isn't really a debate. You may prefer other weapons, that is absolutely fine, but statistically, you can't really do any better than the Fedorov. What comes very close to the Fedorov is the AVT-40, another Soviet weapon. The PPSH, a third Soviet killing machine, is also very viable. Then you could reference a number of Soviet tanks too. So you may be thinking, isn't this Soviet bias? No. No, it isn't, because of weaponry almost equally as amazing from other factions. Like the STG-44, the FG-42-2, the Gewehr-43 Kurtz, the M2 and M2A1 Carbines, the Browning A2, the 50-round Drum Mag Thompson. I could go on. The same thing is for tanks and aircraft across different campaigns. The Soviets getting a good weapon at one level is often rebalanced by the Axis getting a better one at another. So. How can it be assumed that Gaijin and Darkflow are Soviet biased when there's amazing weapons for both sides? Now, is this all to say that certain Soviet weapons and tanks aren't overpowered? No, not at all. There are some very overpowered Soviet stuff, but it goes for every other faction in the game as well. But perhaps you want even more statistical evidence. On our Discord server recently, we hosted an event with a 10v10 high level competitive series of matches, which you can get involved with in the future, by the way. We did allies versus axis, as in one team can only play allies and the other only axis, on a huge variety of different maps, as well as mixing up the players heavily between every battle to get as balanced matches as we could and to account for low sample size bias issues. And guess what happened? The Axis won every single match. Now this goes against everything you've probably heard in this video and on the forums and reddit and whatever, and is a very very interesting result. Now I'm not saying this is the be all and end all, as if my memory serves me correctly we only did around 10 battles, but this goes to show that actually, if anything, Axis bias in a macro overview of the entire game could actually be a thing in Enlisted, not Soviet bias. Perhaps Germany doesn't suffer, after all. Special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members, including Vendatrex, Narfalex and Akolo QE, who all actually voted for this video topic. And you can too, as a supporter of the channel. But now that you know that Soviet bias really isn't a thing, that'll help you understand this video on the top 20 weapons in the entire game. I will be doing an updated version on that video soon, so subscribe so you you don't miss it.